Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and you're watching Screencast 12.7 on the hydrolysis of salts. In today's lesson we're going to talk about how we can determine if a salt is acidic, basic, or neutral simply by looking at its formula. So if we just backtrack a little bit, we've been talking about this reaction. An acid plus a base produces salt plus water. And so far, the salt hasn't really been getting too much attention. We've looked at the strengths of the acids and bases. We know that we produce water as the actual neutralization between the H plus and the OH minus. Uh, but it turns out the salt is actually pretty important too. Now the salt, based on how it was formed, in other words, which acid and base were used to neutralize each other, can be acidic, basic, or neutral itself. So I could take this salt, I could dissolve it in water. And when I measure the pH, the pH might actually be no, not neutral. It could be acidic or basic. Um, so it's kind of weird to think about a salt that doesn't have any H plus or OH minus ions present in it impacting the pH, but that does in fact happen, and we're going to talk about it today. All right, hopefully we're so sick of seeing this equation by now. Acid plus base yields salt plus water, a very specific type of neutralization. And ba uh, sorry, a very specific type of double replacement, I should say. Uh, based on the strength of the acid and the base, we can determine the equivalence point of the neutralization. That's what we talked about in the previous lesson. Um, if you have a strong acid and a strong base neutralizing each other, you get a neutral equivalence point. Strong acid, weak base, acidic equivalence point weak acid, strong base, a basic equivalence point, and we don't ever really titrate weak acid plus weak base. So when it comes to hydrolysis of salts, uh, hopefully with the word hydrolysis, you see hydro built right into the front, um, and that's talking about water. We're talking about dissolving these salts in water. So based on the identity of the salt, we can work backwards to try to determine what acid and base were reacted. We know that the cation is always going to come from the base. Think about it. Our acids are always HX, X just being some anion. So the cation from an acid is always a hydrogen ion. The anion is going to come from the base. We always have, we'll use Y, not for yttrium. Um, you know, that's probably not a good idea. Let's do M for metal. Uh, the anion for a base is always going to be hydroxide, so the anion must come from the acid. And then based on the strength of the acid and the base that were used to produce that salt, we can determine if the salt is acidic, basic, or neutral. So let's go through and do an example. Uh, let's talk about NaCl, sodium chloride, something you're very familiar with. We know that the cation has to come from the base. So this had to have come from sodium hydroxide. We're only going to look at Arrhenius acids and bases. The chloride ion must have come from the acid. That means it came from HCl, hydrochloric acid. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So if I was to take sodium chloride, dissolve it in water, and measure the pH, I would see that the pH is equal to 7. It's neutral. Sodium chloride um, is the product of a strong acid and a strong base, so we have a neutral or relatively neutral salt. Let's try some practice problems. Um, in class, we'll actually go through and test the pHs. Needless to say, that's going to be hard on a PowerPoint slide. Um, so we'll just do a little bit of practice. We've got the salt. I want you to give me the formula of the acid and the base, tell me if that's a strong or weak acid and base, and then predict the endpoints. Uh, so I'll go through the first one with you just to make sure you've got the hang of it. All right, we have PBNO32, lead to nitrate. Uh, so we know the cation comes from the base, so that must have been PBOH in parentheses 2. And we know that the anion comes from the acid, so this is probably HNO3. So let's check. Uh, yeah, HNO3. Nitric acid, is it strong or weak? Now this is a strong acid. No way to tell just by looking at it. You have to memorize your seven strong acids and bases. Let's check our base. Lead to hydroxide. Good, we got it right. Strong or weak? Yeah, this isn't on our list of seven strong acids. This is a weak base. So if we have the salt, a strong acid plus a weak base, we will see an acidic endpoint. Go ahead, pause the video, and try out the remaining five questions. We'll review them together.
All right, we've got sodium carbonate. That's coming from carbonic acid, a weak acid, and sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So strong base plus weak acid, that's going to give us a salt that is basic in nature. So when I dissolve sodium carbonate in water and I test its pH, it's going to be above seven. Up next, we have sodium acetate. Acetic acid is our acid. That's the active ingredient in vinegar. It's a weak acid. You wouldn't want to ingest strong acids. Um, our base, again, is sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So we see another basic salt. Sodium sulfate. Sulfuric acid must be the acid. That's strong. Sodium hydroxide is our base, also strong. So strong plus strong gives us a neutral uh, salt. So when that's dissolved in water, like sodium chloride, we'll see no real change in pH. Zinc nitrate, uh, HNO3, nitric acid, strong acid. Zinc hydroxide, a weak base. We'll have an acidic salt. This will cause the pH to drop when it's dissolved in water. And last but not least, we have hydroiodic acid. It's one of our seven strong acids. Potassium hydroxide, one of our seven strong bases. So we end up with a neutral salt. All right, that's really the gist of it. Uh, so we're just doing the opposite of all those acid-base neutralization reactions that we talked about the last couple lessons. Instead of trying to predict the formula of the salt, we want to backtrack and we want to know the formula of the acid and the base that were used to create that salt. Um, in order to predict whether the salt will be acidic, basic, or neutral, you need to know the seven strong acids and seven strong bases. I know I've said it dozens of times by now. I'm so sorry for repeating myself to those of you who have um, actually gone through and memorized them, but I can assure you not everybody has. You need to know them. If you're flipping back and forth to that page to check the strength of an acid or a base, that means you don't have them memorized and you need to carve out like two minutes over the next couple of days to uh, really get those stuck in your head. All right. Um, well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you again soon.